Uh-oh, guess what day it is? Everybody, thanks for tuning in to Talking Whatever Wednesday. I'm your host, alias Chuck Finley. Glad you're listening out there wherever wherever you are. Follow the show on Twitter at TWPod1. Also on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Talking Whatever Wednesday. You can find the show on various uh, platforms. And feel free to give it five stars. It's on Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Radio Public, Spotify, Stitcher, and iTunes. Tonight, I want to talk about Francis Tumbleteen. Francis Tumblety was born in 1833. He was an Irish-born American medical quack who earned a small fortune posing as an Indian herb doctor throughout the United States and Canada. He was an eccentric self-promoter and was often in trouble with the law. According to the 1850 census, Tumblety was born in Ireland. He and his parents, James and Margaret, along with his ten brothers and sisters, immigrated to Rochester, New York, a few years after he was born. By the age of 17, he was selling books, which were possibly pornographic, Along the Erie Canal between Rochester and Buffalo, New York, he left home around that same age and didn't return for 10 years. He was briefly employed as a cleaner at Liz Bernard's Hospital in Rochester. Double T initially set himself up in business in Detroit, Michigan. He claimed to be a great physician, but was commonly perceived as a quack. He sold patent medicines such as Double T's Temple Destroyer and Dr. Morse's Indian Root Pills and gained a reputation for its eccentric, Ostentatious clothes, which were frequently of a military nature. According to Tumblety, by 1857 he was practicing medicine in Canada before moving to New York City and Washington, D.C., where he claimed to have first been introduced to Abraham Lincoln. Now, Tumblety's medicinal approach was based on herbal remedies over mineral poisons or surgical techniques. He was connected to the death of one of his patients in Boston but escaped prosecution. In 1858, he returned to Rochester, apparently a rich man, making an ostentatious display of his wealth and new social standing, claiming it had been achieved through patenting of his medicinal cures. <coughs> Bullshit! <coughs> Excuse me. I'm, I'm so sorry. Federal tax record show he was in Maryland in 1863, but he soon moved to St. Louis, Missouri. May 5, 1865, he was arrested in St. Louis, taken to Washington on order to the Secretary of War for alleged complicity in the assassination of President Abraham Lincoln. Police believe that he was an associate of David Harold, who was captured with John Wilkes Booth. Double T denied any association with Harold, and there was nothing to tie him to the plot, so he was released without charge on May 30, 1865. There are a couple of strange things about Tumblety. First, he appeared to revel in denouncing all women, but reserved a special hatred for prostitutes. His misogyny on a failed marriage to a prostitute. In Washington, D.C., he displayed a collection of uteruses preserved in jars to his guests at an all-male dinner party, he proudly boasted that they came from every class of woman. Whatever the hell that means. Humble T returned to Rochester and moved in with an elderly female relative whose house also served as his office. He was living in Baltimore, Maryland during the 1900 census, but returned to St. Louis, where he died in 1903 of heart disease. He was buried in the family plot in Rochester. He visited Europe several times, including Ireland, Scotland, England, Germany, and France. He claimed to have been introduced to Charles Dickens, the King William, and to have provided treatment to Louis Napoleon, for which he was awarded the Legion of Honor. During one visit, he became closely acquainted with writer Hall Kane. As a young man of 21, Kane encountered the self-proclaimed Great American Doctor, who was 43 at the time, after he set up at 177 Duke Street in Liverpool in 1874, offering herbal cure-all elixirs and patent medicines to the public. 
which he claimed were secrets of the American Indians. Remember, this guy's a quack. This shit's it's all bullshit. Don't worry about it. Hamill T would eventually flee London after the death of Edward Handwriting in January 1875, the same night that he took a spoon of medicine supplied by Tumble T. And an action taken by William Carroll to sue Tumble T 200 pounds after literally publishing a false testimonial. In the wake of the adverse publicity from newspapers reporting these stories, Tumble T recruited Kane to edit his biography. A pamphlet entitled Passages from the Life of Dr. Francis his biographies, was published in March 1875. Now, why am I going into his time in London? Well, it's because Francis Tumblety, the suspect, and the Jack the Ripper professional police officers and amateur historical researchers Stuart Evans and Paul Ganey detailed evidence of this in their book, Jack the Ripper, the First American Serial Killer, the Temple T was temporarily resident in a boarding house in Whitechapel during the brief period of the murder rampage of Jack the Ripper. They pieced together a case that he might be the culprit. Police arrested Temple T on November 7th, 1888 on unrelated charges of gross indecency, apparently for being, having been caught engaging in a homosexual encounter, which was illegal at the time. Now, while awaiting trial on this charge, on a bail of 300 pounds, and knowing that Scotland Yard was increasingly interested in him with regard to the recent murder spree, he fled England for France on November 20th under the false name of Frank Townsend, and on November 24th, 1888, he returned to the United States. Already notorious in the United States for his self-promotion and previous grudges with the law, oh, um, I forgot to mention that in 1881, he was arrested for pickpocketing in New Orleans. That's fun. Anyway, uh, his arrest in London was reported in, in the New York Times as being connected to the Ripper murders. American newspaper reports that Scotland Yard tried to extradite him have not been confirmed by research in the contemporary British press or the London fil police files. However, English police inspector Walter Andrew traveled to America, perhaps partly to trace double The police who had him under surveillance said, quote, there is no proof of his complicity in the White Temple murders, and the crime for which he is under bond in London is not extraditable. End quote. Tumblety would then publish a self aggrandizing pamphlet titled Dr. Francis Tumblety, Sketch of the Life of the Gifted, Eccentric, and World Famed Physician, in which he would attack the rumors in the press, but omitted any mention of his criminal charges and arrest. Go figure. Why would he mention that? You know? Let's think about that. Former Detective Chief Inspector John Littlechild of the Metropolitan Police mentioned Tubble T as a Ripper suspect in a letter to journalist and author George R. Sims, dated September 23, 1913, which was discovered by Evans and Ganey, for sale in a bookshop in Richmond upon Thane. Littlechild suspected Tubble T because of his extreme misogyny and his previous criminal record. Interesting note is that other ripperologists, as I guess they're called, have dismissed Tumble D as a plausible ripper suspect, citing the fact that his appearance and age didn't match the description of any of the men that were seen with the murder victims, and that his relatively tall height of at least five foot ten and enormous mustache would have made him particularly suspicious or conspicuous. However, a contemporary interview describes Tumble T as having a much smaller mustache at the time of the White Devil murders than is seen in the well-known photographs. I want to point out that facial hair can change. You can shave it. You can let it grow. So much can be done with a mustache or a beard. God, is this the one? Is this a really a hold-up? Seriously. All right, it's highly probable we'll never know for sure who the Jack the Ripper was. Was it Francis Tumble T? But anyway, that's the episode for this week. Let me know what you think. Email me at talkingwhateverwednesday at gmail.com. Um, again, follow the show on Twitter at TWWpod1. And it's on Facebook, facebook.com slash talkingwhateverwednesday. I'm out.